welcome to my youtube channel so in this video lecture we are going to see how to demodulate the pulse amplitude modulated signal so in the last uh, lecture i have already explained you about how to generate a pulse amplitude modulated signal or unipolar sampled signal using the multtc now today we have to uh, again see that how this a uh, pulse amplitude modulated signal can be demodulated and we can recover back our original message signal so please those who are watching this video uh, first time and they have not watched my previous video how to get the pulse amplitude modulated signal uh, please uh, go through my previous video i have already shared the link for uh, pulse amplitude modulation video okay that i have already covered in the previous lecture okay uh, so it is already available in the description box and i have already provided you the link for its uh, theoretical version also so in which i have already discussed about the theory portion of our pulse amplitude modulated signal so i please uh, uh, request all the viewers please go through those particular uh, video lectures so that you will be able to understand how to generate the pulse amplitude modulated signal and then you can learn how the same signal can be demodulated and we can recover back our original message signal so let's uh, begin this discussion of how to demodulate the signal so you please uh, recall these things okay this is our unipolar uh, sampling circuit or our pulse amplitude modulated circuit okay this particular portion that we have already implemented in my previous lecture so now today uh, you just try to recall this uh, values okay here i have given the message signal okay so that message signal was of 1 kilohertz frequency and we have uh, kept its amplitude uh, which is actually varying between 2.5 to 3.6 uh, volt okay this is our offset okay uh, this is our peak value and this is our offset value okay so these things i have already established in my previous uh, lecture okay so why i have taken this amplitude equals to 2.5 uh, volt and uh, why this offset was chosen equals to 3.6 volt so that i have already established in my previous lectures so to uh, get the details please uh, go through uh, that particular lecture so these are the uh, values that we have taken in my previous uh, lecture again here i have taken the pulse okay we have taken the square pulses and then uh, this particular value we have chosen so okay the offset that was given is equals to minus 2.5 volt and here it is the amplitude that i have taken is 2.5 volt so um, by choosing these parameters okay by choosing these parameters we got our a unipolar sampled signal or pulse amplitude modulated signal uh, here at this particular terminal okay across the resistance 1 kilo at this point so here we can observe this waveform again okay that we have already uh, generated in my previous laboratory okay so here you can see that uh, this is our red signal is actually our unipolar sampled signal okay and this yellow line denotes our message signal fine so this we have already uh, generated in our previous uh, video lecture now you can see that this particular uh, in, uh, unipolar sample signal or pulse amplitude modulated signal if you see uh, this is uh, you can call it as a naturally sampled signal okay uh, because you can see that uh, this uh, uh, flat the top of this pulses are not flat okay but it is taking the shape of our message signal okay so if you stop it you can see that uh, anywhere if you see uh, if you see this waveform okay uh, we can see that anywhere this uh, sample uh, this particular pulse is uh, not having a top uh, it stop is not flat but rather it is actually taking the shape of our message signal okay wherever the message signal is whatever be the magnitude whatever be the shape of the message signal and therefore i can call it as a naturally sampled signal okay so it is a naturally sampled signal so uh, to demodulate this signal okay to demodulate this uh, or such type of sampled signal or pulse amplitude modulated signal uh, i have already discussed in my uh, previous uh, lecture of pulse amplitude modulation so i have shared the link for this lecture also so please go through it if you want more detail so in this lecture i explained that if we have any arbitrary message signal uh, then this message signal if we uh, do a natural sampling okay with the rectangular pulse stream 
then this type of uh, waveform we are going to obtain that we can see because we have chosen the uh, rectangular, uh, we have chosen the uh, sinusoidal carrier here, a sinusoidal masses signal and therefore uh, this type of sample signal we are going to uh, get from the circuit. Now, uh, the same thing if you see, if we want to demodulate, okay, or to get the idea of how to demodulate this uh, pulse amplitude modulated signal, uh, we have to look at its uh, frequency spectrum of the modulated wave. Okay, so that we have already seen in my uh, previous lecture, theory lecture. Okay, so this was the actually uh, it's a uh, spectrum of the modulated wave. Okay, in the case when uh, the masses signal was actually our uh, multitone signal. Okay, it should be a multitone signal. So if it is a multitone signal, this type of waveform we are uh, going to get. Okay, this type of uh, uh, spectrum we are going to get frequency spectrum. So, uh, if we want to recover back the masses signal, okay, so this is the portion of our masses signal, fine, this is the portion of our masses signal. So, we just want to remove all the high frequency components, you remember that we need to remove all the high frequency components, and we have to just retain this uh, message part, okay, this part. So, how this can be done? So, by simply passing the uh, this uh, sampled version of the signal through a, an appropriate low pass filter uh, with an appropriate cutoff frequency. So that we can design and then if we apply this signal directly to that particular low pass filter, obviously the output that we are going to get is uh, our uh, original message signal that we have uh, applied, okay, for the sampling purpose. So this way we can uh, get our output, okay, this way we can uh, perform and we can get back our original masses signal, okay? So I have shared this link for the uh, lecture, okay? Uh, our theory lecture, you please go through it if you want more details. So here I'm just uh, trying to show you that how this can be recovered back. So here you can see that at this portion, we are going to get the pulse amplitude modulated signal. Now we have to apply the low pass filter. So here you can see that uh, I have taken the second order Butterworth low pass filter. Okay, this is second order Butterworth low pass filter uh, that I have already designed uh, for the case of uh, means I have already uh, explained how this filters can be designed. Okay, this filters can be designed how this resistance value can be chosen, how this capacitance value can be chosen uh, to get an appropriate specification of the low pass filter. For example, in this case. Uh, because the mass signal that we are actually giving, uh, this mass signal is having its uh, frequency equals to one kilohertz. Uh, remember that this signal that we are giving here is a sinusoidal uh, frequency carrier, okay? So it is just having a single tone, means single frequency component. It is not a multi-tone signal. So even if you are uh, able to design a low pass filter uh, whose cutoff frequency is greater than the uh, one kilohertz, then obviously, the filter will be able to uh, pass the low frequency component or your message, your desired message signal, and it will be filtered out all the high frequency components. So here, this is our low pass filter. I have already, uh, I have also shared the link for how to design the low pass filter. Those who have not watched that video also, they can also go through it uh, to have an idea how to design because we know that while uh, designing the low pass filter, we need to uh, follow a certain uh, specification criteria. For example, what should be the 3 dB cutoff frequency? What should be the gain? Okay, uh, that things we have to actually give, and then only we can uh, choose these values of R and C. Okay, resistance value and the capacitance values. So uh, here you can see that uh, this is one of the uh, second order low pass filter I have uh, designed, and then again the same filter I have repeated here. Okay. So why I have chosen this two stages, okay? I have just taken the two cascaded stages of the second order low pass filter. So overall, you will find that the overall uh, order of this filter, if you uh, take this input, okay, from this point, and if you are taking the output from this point, okay, because this is a cascaded two connection of the low pass filter, second order low pass filter, the overall order will become fourth, okay? It is the fourth order low pass filter, you can say. Fine, so why I have chosen because uh, the, one stage of this second order low pass filter was not appropriate uh, to uh, recover back the original mass signal that we can see uh, from this particular uh, simulation. So once you will simulate it, okay, let's just simulate it. 
so here we have got this sampled signal okay so uh, now the sample signal we have applied to the low pass filter input here we can see that it is applied to this low pass uh, filter input okay this uh, is connected here okay and now here you can see that what is the output of our low pass filter it is uh, a red signal okay here you can see that this is the red signal okay so after passing through the uh, this particular low pass filter okay second order low pass filter of first stage low pass filter okay uh, this type of red signal we are going to get okay so here you can find that a little bit uh, distortion in this signal is actually observed okay a little bit distortion in the signal is being observed so to just uh, remove that uh, uh, this particular error okay we can add one more stage of the second order low pass filter and that's why i have added one more stage here you can see that okay and the output of this first order low pass filter uh, second order low pass filter of the first stage is actually connected to the uh, second stage okay and then uh, we have taken the output from this particular uh, last stage of the filter okay so here you can see that uh, we have got this yellow signal okay which is almost our uh, pure basis signal that we have applied for the sampling purpose so uh, to uh, means uh, identify that whether it is the same uh, signal that we have uh, means used for the sampling pur purpose is actually recovered or not uh, I explained you that the only thing that we need to measure is, uh, first of all, it should be a sinusoidal signal. So we can observe that it is a sinusoidal signal. And the second thing that we have to ensure is that uh, whether it is of same frequency or not. Okay, amplitude doesn't matter, but uh, its frequency matters. Okay, so le let's see you just uh, stop somewhere and then you can try to measure what will be the uh, sample its uh, frequency of this particular signal. So here you can see that here the time base or the time sensitivity is 500 microseconds per division. Okay, so how many division it is covering? Uh, you can see that it is started at this point. Okay. So from here to here, it is almost uh, uh, taking two divisions, okay? You can adjust this signal, okay? You can just shift it a little bit or even you can bring this pointers and then you can measure the time differences, okay? So that way we can also uh, do this measurement, fine? So that way we can also perform this measurement. So uh, this way you can do the measurement. Right now it is selected to the first signal, okay? Uh, so you can see at the channel uh, B, this uh, yellow signal is actually connected to channel B here. Fine. So you can just see the readings of the channel B. So it is very easy to do. Okay. Here you can uh, select this one. Okay. It will be connected to this point and then it should be connected to this point. Okay? You can calculate the time difference. Okay. So that time difference, uh, if you calculate it to minus T1, here it is actually giving the voltages, okay? And here it is giving the time. So it is almost one milliseconds, okay? So one millisecond means it is of one kilohertz uh, frequency. So this way we can ensure that this uh, signal that we have recovered is our original basis signal. So I hope you must be able to understand that how to demodulate a pulse amplitude modulated signal Okay, so try to implement the same circuit onto the multi same and the same circuit will give you the proper demodulation of the time circuit. So thank you for watching this uh, video. Uh, if you have any query, let me know with your comments and uh, please go through the all previous lectures or previous videos of implementation of the pulse amplitude modulated signal so that you will have the idea how this is actually modulated first and then how it can be demodulated. So thank you for watching this video. If you have any query, let me know uh, with your comments and please stay connected with the channel to uh, get the more updates. Thank you.